According to the press statement from the Executive Secretary of Uganda National Examination Board, you named Mr. Daniel Odong, a total of 9,893 runners are scheduled to sit their exams from 2,339 examination centers across the country. Mr. Odongo said 41.8% out of 41,129 of the number of students are female, while 58.2% out of 57,264 a male. Majority of learners selected to sit for Uganda Advanced Certificate of Education examinations are from private schools where a total of 80,746 Compared to those in Universal Secondary Education, UPE, with a total of 17,647. Odong said 200 candidates have special needs education necessities and 55 require special support personnel such as transcribers and sign language interpreters. Candidates have this morning kicked off their exams with the European History Paper 3, World Affairs History Paper 4 and Mathematics Paper 1 and will in the afternoon write national movements and New States History Paper 1 and Mathematics Paper 2. Exams run from today to May 3rd this year and Mr. Dong cautioned all stakeholders against examination mode practice, adding that they stand a fine of 5 million shillings and 5 year imprisonment or both. Meanwhile, most heads of various examination centers have managed to observe the standard operation procedures. Brian Katende, Brian Katende and Kachanchi Mtawaz reporting for TV Africa. The request has been rejected by High Court Civil Division Judge Philip Odoki, who said he was not satisfied that Nyanzi made reasonable efforts to look for Nzeriko and failed, thus granting him more time, that is seven days, to look for Nzeriko and serve him personally. Nyanzi, who stood on the National Unity Platform ticket in the elections held in January 14, 2021, first petitioned High Court on March 10, 2021, asking it to overturn Nzeriko's victory on grounds that the polls were marred by several irregularities, such as failure to count votes in accordance with the electoral laws, understating his votes, failure by the presiding officers to submit results from seven polling stations, inconsistencies in counting and tallying of votes on the declaration of result forms, among other respondents including electoral commissioner and the returning officer for Kampala Central. Following this ruling, Nyanzi has said that Nseroko, who is a lawyer by profession, shouldn't be playing hide and seek as it will frustrate innocent litigants from going to courts.
according to Minority Right Group International, MGR, the actual number of Maragori in Uganda is not readily available, rather than being considered under others in the two most recent Ugandan consensus. Leaders from Kliandongo district and the community in Mnyolo sub-region, Midwestern Uganda estimate that Maragori population to be between 25,000 and 30,000. Majority of Maragoli are found in Kiyadongo district and basically occupy at least a parish comprised of two to three villages. Some are scattered within Kigumba, the main town council for Kiyadongo district. Maragoli have lived in Uganda for more than a century and until recently they had experienced a few serious problems either with the communities they settled in or with the government. Although they were absent from the national schedule in the 1995 constitution and the amended schedule in 2005 constitution amendment that list the tribes of Uganda, they cautioned to enjoy the same rights as other citizens. The current difficulties of Maragori community began in 2015 when the government introduced mass national registration of Ugandan citizens and issued each person a national identification card under a newly constitutional national identification and registration authority in NIRA. In 2017, Nila held into 15,000 national identity cards of members of the Maragoli on grounds that they are not recognized the tribe in Uganda. Katende Chawasinga, reporting for TV Africa. Sources told TV Africa that 14 of the released prisoners have been in detention for the past four years in the Dahilik Island. 22 others arrested at the end of last month have also been freed on bail. The prisoners are all from Christian Evangelical and Pentecostal denominations. In 2002, Eritrea introduced a new law that forbids all churches except for the Orthodox Catholic and Ruthelan denominations. Sunni Islam is also officially recognized. The Eritrean government has been releasing people imprisoned because of their religious affiliations. In September 2020, the Eritrean government released more than 20 prisoners who had been detained for years. In December, the authorities also released 28 members of the Jehovah's Witness group after they had served a long prison term. The Eritrean government accuses Pentecostal and evangelical Christians of being instruments of foreign governments. The ballot counting started soon after voting closed in the capital, Jamena, the Reuters news agency reported. Some 7 million Chadians were eligible to vote in the election. Mr. Deby, in power for 30 years, was facing six weaker candidates after the major opposition leaders either boycotted or were barred from running. Voters expressed mixed concerns, some saying they were not sure the election would be free and fair, with others saying there was no need to vote because the results might have been predetermined. Some said they are happy to have performed her civic duty 
and hoped the elected president would solve such basic problems as ensuring better health care for the population. Provisional results are due on 25th April and final results on May 15th. General Johnson Juma Okot, who was the head of the South Sudan People's Defense Forces, was replaced with General Santino Deng Wall. President Kiel also dismissed General Ruben Malek Riak from his opposition as Deputy Minister of Defense and replaced him with Lieutenant General Cholthorn Balok. In Amin Reshafo in the Intelligence Services, President Kiel also replaced General Thomas Dwarf Gwet as the Director General of the Intelligence Wing of the National Security Service with Major General Simon Yen Makwak. The President promoted a call called Cook, the head of the Internal Security Wing of the NSS, to the rank of First Lieutenant General while maintaining his position. The Deputy Minister of Defense and General Guet have been reassigned as ambassadors to Eritrea and Kuwait respectively. Mr. Talon is widely expected to win the elections, which have been boycotted by the bulk of the opposition. Turnout was low, with several polling stations in the capital reporting low levels of participation. According to the chairman of Benini's Autonomous National Electoral Commission, polling stations were largely able to open on time. This is despite reports that roads to northern and central Benin had been blocked by opposition supporters. But according to RFI, voting could not take place in save an opposition stronghold in central Benin after youths blocked electoral workers from accessing polling centers. SAVE was the scene of violent clashes earlier in the week between opposition supporters and security forces. <laughs> The agreement on host government and shareholding for the pipeline, as well as the transportation and tax deals, are a step towards the start of construction of the crude oil pipeline. The two countries entered a partnership to build a 1,443-kilometer oil pipeline to pump Uganda's oil from the Albertine Basin in the west of the country to Tanzania's Indian Ocean port of Tanga. When built, the US dollar 3.5 billion pipeline project will be the longest heated oil pipeline in the world. A final investment decision, a commitment of funds will have to be reached by the two countries and oil companies before the pipeline construction can begin. They hope that the pipeline will bring socio-economic benefits and revenues to the region by creating an estimated 10,000 jobs during construction and operation of the project. But the project has been made with fierce criticism from environmentalists who say that it will upset fragile ecosystems in the Lake Victoria Basin and the Serengeti Wildlife Park. Uganda is projected to pump its first on an estimated 1.4 billion barrels of commercially viable oil in 2025. Come on. Bagheri!
In a press conference, Gao Fu added that China was considering mixing vaccines as a way of boosting efficacy. China has developed four different vaccines approved for public use, though some trials abroad had suggested efficacy as low as 50%. More than 100 million people in China have received at least one shot of the vaccine. Beijing has insisted that jabs are effective and said in March that obtaining visas would be easier for foreigners who have received a Chinese vaccine. So far, Sinovac's CoronaVac jab has only been fully authorized for use by China. But Beijing is also offering its vaccines around the world and has already shipped millions of doses to a number of countries. In Asia, the biggest takers are Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Thailand and Pakistan, while in America, Brazil, Mexico, Chile, Colombia and Ecuador have also ordered millions of shots. In Europe, Turkey and Ukraine have signed large contracts for corona vaccine. The vaccine is thought to be particularly important for African countries, where so far Zimbabwe, Somalia, Djibouti, Benin and Tunisia have received vaccines from China. The team moves 11 points clear after a 1-0 win over Cagliari on Sunday. Antonio Conte men are now on the verge of putting an end to Juventus' extraordinary nine title winning streak. Lukaku, a Belgian of Congolese origin, has scored 21 goals in 29 appearances. This time, which is a few goals than Cristiano Ronaldo, who has 25. But Sunday's match was deadlocked until the last 13th minutes. An effort by Stefan Devaregi's effort hit the crossbar in the 69th minute. But Lukaku made late work of Italian football and rare goal from fullback Matteo Damian cemented their win. Meanwhile, defending champion Juventus is the to a 3 1 victory over Gnoa still on Sunday. <laughs> This is Africa, and that was the news.